make tag GUI. All right. It takes the tag, takes the index as the argument. So in this case, the tag would be Mike or whatever I put in as my search uh, tag. The index is going to be zero because we're assuming this is the first one. And then we inflate our layout file. And we do that in these two statements. This is real similar to what we've done up here, where we've set the content view. The difference is, is we're inflating this to create a view that's not the main content view. This is a view that we're going to add somewhere to the main content view. So remember when I set the content view, I used the terminology, we're, we're, we're rehydrating it, we're bringing it back to life, we're inflating it. We're doing the same thing here. In other words, we're taking that template that lives in the XML file and we're bringing it to life. We're making an actual view based on that layout. All right? And that's what we do here. In other words, this line is creating a new tag view, all right? So after the statement, we'll have a view that consists of the things that are in that new tag view XML file. And if you remember what was in that new tag view XML file, there were two buttons, the tag and the edit tag. Now, the button, new tag button, we're doing something very similar to what we've done up here. Where we're getting pointers to the different things on our page. Like up here when we got a, a pointer to the text box. Oops. We said the text box equals edit text, find view by ID. Here though, we're not getting a pointer to an element on our main content view. We're getting a pointer to an element on that view that we just inflated. In other words, that one table row that consists of the two buttons that we're going to put somewhere on our main view. That's what new tag view is. Just that one brand new table row that consists of the two buttons. Here we're grabbing a pointer to the one button the new tag uh, button. We're setting the text to the value of the tag. So that's why the text said Mike, because that's the tag name that I put in. And we're creating an on-click listener for it. All right. We do the same thing for the edit button. And create an on-click listener for it. Then finally, we go and we add to the query table layout this new view. In what position? In the position as indicated by the index. So, that index, remember, the very first time is going to be position zero. So this will make it the first table row. What are we adding? We're adding that new tag view. What is that new tag view? Well, we got the template of it from that XML file. We then set the attributes of those elements, those views in this view, based on the arguments to the function. And then we're adding that view, which is a table row, to our query table layout. What's our query table layout? It is this thing here. It's an instance variable. Remember, when we did the onCreate, we grabbed the pointer to this inner table. So now, when we click the Save button, in essence, what we do is we call a function that goes and inflates this brand new table row. We set the attributes to it. Then we tell it to add that table row to this table. There's a lot going on here, I recognize. So if, if you're fuzzy about things, um, it's
is understandable. We'll, we'll spend more time on this and we'll go over it. Really, the big things to remember for this, all right, are remember why we are grabbing pointers to these instance variables, all right, so we can do something with them later. Notice we didn't grab pointers to all the views that are on the main screen. Why? Because we really don't need to do anything with them. All right? But we do need a pointer to that table because we're going to add stuff to that table. So we need to be able to point to the table and say, this is the guy we want to add it to. We've created our listeners that say, hey, for that save button, when it gets clicked, do this stuff. The code on those listers is actually very straightforward. It simply delegates this to um, other stuff, to other functions and other methods. Then finally, ultimately, when we go to save this, we do two things. We add the tag to the save tag list. That's one thing that we do so that the next time this application fires off, it'll start off with, with uh, the tag list already populated. The second thing we do is we go in and we actually add the buttons associated with it to the table. Now, the reason that we do it in this particular manner will become a little more clear as we trace through all the different use cases, right? Because we're sharing code here. Some of the things that I'm kind of talking over very quickly, all right, we're also calling some of the same code when the page initially loads, and we're restoring the list of saved searches. So that's part of the reason why we're doing it this way, all right, and we'll see more details on that next time. Um, my suggestion between now and then is to look at this code and, and try to trace through as many of the, the, the use cases that you can think of. Try to trace through the use case that we did today. Try to trace through the use case of what happens if someone forgets to enter in a tag value and tries to save it. What happens when we clear it? What happens when the application starts off the first time and it's, it's restoring the saved uh, things? All right. We'll pick up on this next time. We'll do some review and we'll consider some other use cases. Now, you have a quiz this week. The quiz this week will not take place during class time. It will take place between Thursday and Sunday online. My aim is to make the quizzes straightforward. All right? I'm not going after trick questions, and I'm not asking, like, heavy programming questions. I might ask you what a line of code means, for example. I might ask you why we do this. Why we do that. The purpose of this is to really make sure that, that you have the, the main concepts down. All right? My idea is, is that if you've been you know, doing the readings, attending class, working on the assignments, that the quizzes will be fairly straightforward. All right? So there'll be anywhere from three to five short answer questions. Or maybe you have to supply a statement, a programming statement. Or maybe you write a paragraph explaining why you do something or why we do it this way as opposed to that way. All right. Um, so that's the quiz. It will be made available on Thursday. And you'll have um, all the way through Sunday to uh, do it. Any questions at this point? All right. We'll see you over in lab.